Hi, Dr. Crowder here, and this video is a brief overview of the end replication problem that results during DNA replication and cell division, specifically in eukaryotes where our chromosomes are linear. As we know, during DNA replication, new DNA is synthesized in the 5' to 3' direction. Replication occurs bidirectionally from the origin of replication, leading to leading strand synthesis and lagging strand synthesis, where leading strand synthesis occurs continuously in the 5' to 3' prime direction, and lagging strand synthesis occurs discontinuously, where short fragments of uh, new DNA is synthesized in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. And during lagging strand synthesis, short RNA primers are laid down by the enzyme primase that provide a 3' prime hydroxyl for DNA polymerase to add uh, new nucleotides to. Now, these primers are then removed and DNA polymerase then fills in these gaps because each fragment has a three, free 3' prime hydroxyl to which new nucleotides can be added to. However, in the context of a linear chromosome, at the very end of that linear chromosome where the primer has been removed, there is no 3' prime hydroxyl to which nucleotides can be added onto by DNA polymerase. And so this then creates a 3' prime overhang at the very end of a chromosome, which we call a telomere, where telomeres are the end of eukaryotic chromosomes. And so then this 3' prime overhang, or this portion of the chromosome, would then be lost in subsequent divisions. And we refer to this as the end replication problem, where chromosome ends will get shorter and shorter with each round of DNA replication and cell division because of the mechanism of lagging strand synthesis and the requirement of a free 3' prime hydroxyl for DNA polymerase to add nucleotides to, where at the end, there is no 3' prime hydroxyl after the primer is removed. At the ends of chromosomes, which we call now telomeres, telomeres are composed of repetitive sequence of DNA. In vertebrates, this sequence is TTAGGG. And so that sequence, TTAGGG, is repeated tens of hundreds, if not thousands of times in vertebrates. And the sequence that's repeated at the end of chromosomes is species-specific. And so other higher eukaryotes have different sequences at their telomeres, but the mechanism where there's a repeated sequence at the end of telomeres is conserved in eukaryotes. And the length of telomeres, or the number of repeats, varies. Uh, it can vary from 300 bases of repetitive DNA up to thousands of bases of repetitive DNA. And the second component of the protective mechanism against the end replication problem is an enzyme called telomerase. And telomerase is a ribonucleoprotein enzyme where a component of the enzyme is a short RNA molecule that's shown here in red. And the way telomerase works is that that short RNA molecule has a species-specific overlapping complementary sequence to the repetitive sequence of the telomere within the given species. So here we see that the RNA molecule is made up of CCCAA, and because it's RNA, it would be U. In this overlaps with part of the sequence in the telomere end, where here the telomere is shown in blue, and you can see it's a three prime overhang, where the newly synthesized DNA, which is yellow, is not synthesized in that region because there is no three prime hydroxyl. So telomerase, with its RNA template or RNA primer, will bind in a staggered manner to the three prime overhang, and through a reverse transcriptase mechanism, use that RNA primer as a template to add new nucleotides and extend that three prime overhang. So to better illustrate that, let's walk through. We're here, again, we've got the three prime overhang on the bottom. In telomerase, shown here in green, and then the red sequence, has the RNA primer shown in red that will bind staggeredly with the three prime overhang. And then it uses the RNA primer template 
to elongate the three prime overhang. So now you can see that telomerase is adding nucleotides to the three prime overhang directed by the RNA template built into it. Again, through reverse transcription, meaning you're using an RNA template to guide the synthesis of new DNA. And this process will continue where telomerase will then walk or translocate or take a next step to the elongated 3' prime n, again providing a staggered 5' prime overhang for which new DNA can be synthesized opposite from further elongating that 3' prime overhang. And so now you can see if we compare the original 3' prime overhang to the bottom one, we've elongated it by several nucleotides. And this can happen iteratively again and again to extend that 3' prime overhang by several hundred bases. Then, once the 3' prime overhang at the telomere end has been extended, primase comes in and lays down a very short RNA primer which provides that 3' prime hydroxyl that DNA polymerase need it, needs. Polymerase will use that 3' prime hydroxyl to fill in the gap on the newly synthesized DNA strand and then that short RNA primer is removed. And so here we still have a 3' prime overhang where some bases at the end of the chromosome will be missing. So by this mechanism we are actually extending chromosome ends as opposed to losing chromosome ends because again we've extended the chromosome end by a significant number of bases allowing for DNA polymerase to come in and synthesize new DNA opposite of that so that this short primer when it's removed won't lead to loss of genomic sequence. Now the unreplication problem in telomerase are really important because without telomerase as cells divide with each division they will lose part of their telomeres. So here as we can see with each division the, the red telomeres are reducing in size. And loss can be anywhere from 300 nucleotides with every division up to several thousand bases every division. And it will reach a point where so much of the chromosome's ends have been lost such that cells can no longer divide. And so that's called senescence, where a cell can no longer divide. And this is regarded to as the Hayflick limit which is the number of times a normal human cell will divide until it no longer can because of the end replication problem and losing chromosomes. And this is hypothesized to be about 50 to 70 cell divisions. And so once we reach this Hayflick limit or we reach senescence, what happens is the cells age. And as the cells age, the organisms age. And so this is really relevant to the process of aging in adult eukaryotes. And this certainly occurs because in adult somatic cells there is no telomerase. So the gene encoding the telomerase enzyme is by and large not expressed in adult somatic cells. Uh, telomerase is highly expressed in fetal cells and it is expressed in certain stem cells in adults, so cells that need to continuously undergo division, for example, certain germ cells. Um, another really relevant application for telomerase is that it is highly expressed in many cancers. And so the presence of telomerase, when it shouldn't normally be there, allows a cell to avoid this aging process. And so it allows a cell to become immortal and undergo continuous divisions without any limit on the number of times it can divide. And so there is a lot of ongoing research to understand how to potentially uh, inhibit telomerase as a cancer therapy. And then there's also the opposite side of looking at how to uh, use telomerase as a potential tool for studying aging. And so that is the end replication problem and how cells that undergo lots of divisions, so in fetal cells and in germ cells, and then unfortunately in cancer cells, how those cells avoid the end replication problem through uh, the telomerase enzyme.